Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Ellie Snake Lady and today I have little Australia here with me and she's looking all shiny and lovely. Um, so today we're going to be talking about sea snakes. Now, obviously, Australia isn't a sea snake. She is a Mexican black king snake. But I thought I wanted to touch on the subject because I hadn't talked about it before. A bit like Titan the Boa last year when I did that video. Um, I kind of thought I've not touched on sea snakes. So uh, I thought they're a fascinating species of snake. And um, yeah, so I'm going to be talking about that today. And without any further ado, I shall just get straight on with it. And thanks very much for watching okay so as you know i always have my notes and stuff because my brain is terrible at remembering like anything so i do have some notes to read from and i will be um, putting some pictures in along the way so there are two independently evolved groups of sea snake the actual sea snakes related to australian terrestrial elapids i think that's how you pronounce it and the sea crates which are related to the Asian cobras. Although these snakes venom is the most potent, human fatalities are rare because sea snakes are not aggressive. Their venom output is quite small and they have very short fangs as well. So uh, it's kind of good to know that, yeah, they are venomous, but there's hardly any fatalities of humans just for those uh, reasons alone. So of the 55 species of actual sea snakes, most adults are 1 to 1.5 metres long, although some may grow to be 2.7 metres. Now, I don't know which one of the two out of the you know, males and females, which ones are larger, because um, some species of snakes in general, the females are larger and the males are smaller. And then it can be vice versa. You've got the males that are a bit bigger than the females. So... Uh, but yeah, so I'm imagining it's possibly the females that get to be 2.5 metres, which is uh, quite long. In adaptation to marine life, sea snakes have a flattened body with a short paddle-like tail, valvular nostrils, which means, well, you know what a valve looks like. It's like when they breathe in and out, you've got that little flap that, you know, when you breathe in, it kind of closes and when you breathe out, it opens, that kind of thing. Yeah, so yeah, they have valvular nostrils on top of their snout and elongated lungs which run along the entirety of their body so their scales are actually tiny and they don't generally overlap but they do abut 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 so basically their scales um will kind of go like that and touch each other um but you know there might be some scales that overlap slightly but generally they do like abut <laughs> as it were so the belly scales are reduced in size in the primitive species, unlike the more advanced forms where they are absent. As a result, the advanced species cannot crawl and so are helpless on land. So when swimming, a keel is formed along part of the belly, increasing surface area, which basically helps them swim and like propel themselves through the water. Sea snakes can remain submerged for several hours, possibly as much as eight or more. This is partly because they can breathe through their skin. Over 90% of waste carbon dioxide and 33% of oxygen requirement can be transported via the cutaneous respiration. God, that's a bit of a mouthful. But yeah, so basically they can take in um, the oxygen that they need from the water um, through their skin. So uh, that's quite a feat and yet again, it's another reason why I find them quite incredible. <laughs> in 2019, a study of the blue banded sea snake found a highly vascularized area between the snout and the top of the head, which allows oxygen to be transported from the water to the snake's brain. So the six species of sea crate are not as specialized for aquatic life as the actual sea snakes. Although their tail is flattened, their body is cylindrical and their nostrils are lateral. They have enlarged belly scales like terrestrial snakes and can crawl and climb on land. The typical colour pattern consists of alternating bands of black with grey, blue or white rings. The yellow-lipped sea crate is a common species 
with this pattern and yellow snout. So uh, as I say, I'll put up some photos of these so you get a gist of what they look like. Don't know where this girl's going down my boobies, but yes. <laughs> Come on you, missus, how you get? Oh, there we go. So seed crates are actually nocturnal, which I didn't know. Uh, feeding primarily on eels at depths less than 15 metres, which is 49 feet. They go ashore to lay their eggs, climbing up onto limestone caves and rock crevices, where they will lay 1 to 10 eggs. The adults of these average at about 1 metre in length, but some grow to more than 1.5 metres. A sea crate's life expectancy in captivity is 7 years, so... Um, I'm guessing in the wild they'll probably live for maybe half that time, maybe four years, three, four years. But, um, you know, in captivity, they're going to hopefully have the best of the best <laughs> um, of life. And obviously they won't have anything, you know, preying on them, as it were, you know, nothing hunting them um, and wanting to feed on them. But I will get onto that in a bit. So... Back to sea snakes. So sea snakes are front fanged and highly venomous, which I think a lot of us probably know. A fold in the gums of the sea snake hides their fangs and the fangs quickly emerge when biting something. The sea snake fangs are fragile and may break off and remain in the wounds of their victims. To counter the problem of having weak fangs, sea snakes have potent venom that can easily paralyze kill and begin the digestive process of the fish that they target. Sea snakes have evolved from two different kinds of snake, the cobra in Asia and Australian terrestrial elapids. So marine snakes will um, basically give birth to live young, unlike the crates that lay eggs. Um, the sea snakes are solely, you know, in the water, um, you know, having their marine best life. And uh, yes, yeah, so they give birth to live young, which is interesting. I didn't know that. So sea snakes do require fresh water to live and they'll dehydrate if they're out at sea for too long. So I think that there are um, there's times where obviously they'll come across fresh water and they'll be able to drink that. Um, but generally, as a general thing with snakes, they're not massive like drinkers, as it were. They don't drink every single day. They can go quite a few days without having any water. So, um, yeah, again, that's another fact about snakes as well just snakes in general so where do sea snakes live so sea snakes are restricted to coastal areas of the indian and west pacific oceans from the east coast of africa to the gulf of panama except for the yellow belly sea snake found in the open ocean from africa eastwards across the coast of pacific to the west coast of the americas all other species live mainly in waters less than 30 meters which is about 100 feet deep as they must dive to the seafloor to find their food among coral reefs mangroves or on the ocean bottom some species prefer hard surfaces, uh, you know, like coral, while others prefer soft surfaces like sand to hunt their prey, basically. Most sea snakes do actually feed upon fish. Um, that's, you know, obviously that's going to be their general source of food is fish. Um, and they'll feed on the fish basically any size, small to big. Um, and they will also feed on eels. Snake bites. So a sea snake bite is the cause of some fatalities in the western central Pacific. Typical victims are fishermen um, handling gape nets, sorting fish on a trawler or dragging a net while wading in muddy coastal waters or river mouths. Some sea snakes are gentle, inoffensive creatures that bite only when provoked, which is the general thing for a lot of snakes. Um, but some others can be, you know, more aggressive, um, yet again, typical of uh, land snakes as well. As I say, generally with land snakes, if you leave them alone, you'll be fine. But you will get the odd aggressive snake from time to time. So this girl, she is everywhere today. If ever anyone is actually bitten by a sea snake, this is pretty much what to do first aid wise. If the bite is on the arm or the leg, 
a broad crepe bandage, you know, as crepe bandages you can get, um, or material of a similar uh, type, it should be wrapped immediately around the area of the bite. The bandage must be tight and extended over the entire arm or leg. Then a splint should be used to immobilize the arm or leg and hospital treatment must be found as soon as possible, which is obvious because you'll need to get to hospital for antivenom um, and for the doctors and nurses to help deal with the wound. If the bite is on the body, firmly press the area of the bite and look for hospital treatment immediately. So, you know, if it's on your body, you just press something up against it. Um, you know, like if someone deeply, you know, has something on their body, a deep kind of cut or a gash or something like that and um, the classic thing is getting like a credit card or whatever and then wrapping something around that just to sort of seal the wound and keep it where it is but as I say the most important thing is getting to hospital and getting dealt with with antivenom. So the last thing that I normally talk about in these videos is uh, like the conservation so ecology and conservation. So unfortunately, sea snakes are exploited for their skin, their meat and their organs. Since 1934, the meat and skin of sea snakes have been used commercially in Philippines. The local protection of sea snakes has become necessary to avoid over exploitation. So basically over sort of fishing, overly, you know what I mean. So, um, when they're being fished far too much to the point of near extinction. Sea snakes are also exploited in Australia, Japan, uh, Taiwan province of China, Thailand and Vietnam. The local government of Queensland, Australia has introduced a special license to collect sea snakes. Monitoring and controlling the commercial catch is the only way to keep a sustainable yield, allowing local governments to intervene before a catastrophic collapse of local populations occur. However, managing sea snake fisheries and protecting endangered species is impossible without a basic knowledge of the group and the ability to identify the species level. So that's the information about sea snakes that I found. Um, I could have talked a lot more about them, but I didn't want this video getting too long. I can see it's already a real long one, so it's going to be edited quite a lot. <laughs> Um, so yeah, they're, a they're an absolutely fascinating species. As I say, you've got the main sea snakes and then you've got the sea crates. And I think the most fascinating thing for me was that the sea crates, they can live in the sea, but also they've got belly scales so they can crawl and, you know, move on to land to lay their eggs and stuff. But at the same time, this does sort of give them a limited... Uh, sort of range as to where they can actually go um, because they're because of the whole thing of them being in it's great that they can be in the water and on the land but they always have to be near land to I think a you know get out get the oxygen and whatnot and also to lay their eggs whereas um, sea snakes you know, they can, as I say, they'll be underwater for eight hours and um, they haven't got any of those belly scales, so they can't crawl on land. So they're solely in water, like all the time. So, but yeah, they're absolutely beautiful creatures. And um, I've seen a couple of videos of, um, you know, of them swimming in the water and they're just beautiful. Um, yeah, again, <laughs> It's something that in a dream ideal world, I would have a sea snake if it wasn't venomous. Anyway, so my husband is due home soon. So I'm going to wrap up this video here. And I hope that you've got something out of today's video and that you enjoyed it. And if you did, then please like and subscribe. And when you do subscribe, please hit that bell notification and click all so you get notifications of all my latest videos. And if you've got any comments or questions or anything like that, then just pop them in the comments section below and I'll do my best to answer. But for now, from myself and little Australia, it is goodbye. And we'll see you in my next video. Thanks very much for watching.